from Think Press, and then presented the first of two um, to see more practical applications of what Salvatore had presented earlier. So, Squatting Supermarkets um, was created by Think Press with the aim of delineating and prefiguring and putting into practice a new model for shopping. Um, it uses different layers of socially relevant information and superimposes them on products, uh, trying to stabilize a new relationship between producers and consumers uh, directly on the shop floor. So, uh, in the traditional sense, let's say business as usual, we have uh, businesses themselves as the primary source of information towards consumers. So they have the direct interaction, let's say, with consumers via marketing, and it still represents this link today. Uh, this link that's ever more frequently uh, <coughs> manifesting itself at the moment of decision, at the point of sale, or the moment in which you decide to purchase a product. So, um, as we all know, we're currently in a huge ecological crisis where the consumption of natural resources is greatly outpacing the rate at which the natural world is replenishing them. This is something that's not that new. What is, uh, let's say, interesting is the increased visibility and importance of not only politics and policies um, trying to address these environmental issues, but also the way that, um, let's see, these issues are beginning to shape uh, not only production, but uh, the different individual shopping choices that we make as consumers. So in this period of increasing globalization, trade, and inequality, um, more and more consumers in economically developed areas of the world, such as our own, are becoming uh, more concerned with making decisions that are let's say, in the shop that are tied to some sort of ethical, social, um, or ecologically uh, aware sort of purchases. So we still have um, corporate social responsibility, let's say that's the driving factor in terms of marketing these new types of products. They're, let's say, the primary source of what determines or creates a brand or a company's, let's say, environmental track record. Um, consequently, the appreciation of their goods on the market is uh, tied, of course, to this, this relationship. Um, but in the culture of experience, the value of those goods for us as consumers is, of course, tied directly to this type of marketing. Um, and so, oops. so uh, this previous slide was actually, sorry, what we expect. Of course, we all want, let's say, relatively easily understood products. We don't, don't want them to have um, harmful environmental uh, pollution, we want you know, clean, good, fresh products. We don't want uh, things that are tied to, to strong negative uh, environmental impacts. Unfortunately, this is generally what we get. Um, there are more than half a million products on the market, on the global market today, that have some sort of ecological, biological, organic, some sort of, let's say, association with, with quote-unquote good production mechanisms. And, um, what squatting supermarkets and its uh, technological heart, let's say, have to do with this is that they try to outline and fulfill a new uh, critical shopping narrative. Um, it really, let's say, tries to lay out a dialogue in which all of the backstories behind the different products that we consume every day becomes more accessible and visible to, to the public. And so, um, ethical consumerism, social consumerism, environmentally aware consumerism, whatever you want to call it. Let's say that it's um, evolved in the more recent years. Uh, now we're looking at consumers not only as oriented towards awarding a certain brand's virtuous commitment to the environment or to social justice, but um, today's ethical consumer, let's say, is a bit more active, a bit more proactive in um, researching and sharing information on different companies, um, and they generally have the uh, intention of influencing or redefining what the corporate offerings are on the market. And so, um, statistics have shown in a recent study that uh, progressively larger numbers of individuals are willing to pay a premium price. We know this when you go to the grocery store and you see organic uh, products on the shelves or you see some sort of green alternative uh, next to the, the normal business as usual. Um, the point here is that the company in this scenario is no longer the only source of information. I mean, 20 years ago was quite different, of course, before all the technologies that are available today, but um, this idea of multiple voices being heard and, and shared through platforms like Salvatore was talking about earlier is something um, 
could say is somewhat revolutionary. Uh, let's see. So um, this type of consumer that you know says always online, whether it's via smartphone, via computer, PDA, iPad, whatever, whatever it might be, this is the type of consumer that we're targeting. Someone who's above all proactive in uh, maybe participating in uh, online social forums, or they have their own blog, or you know they're doing things on social networks, etc. And the, let's say one of the biggest um, new characteristics of this type of consumer is that they are really questioning the reports that are given by different producers or distribution companies, and they're highly attentive to sustainability practices. Uh, they trust their peers generally more than organizations or institutions that are providing the same types of information. And they have a strong belief in this type of information sharing. Okay. So, what does the squatting supermarket and IC platform do? Essentially, it uses augmented reality to break open these codes of commercial communications on the products that we're using every day. It creates an interpretive layer on top of reality where we can, let's say, to some extent, bypass the commercial control strategies enacted by governments and corporations. So, thank you. Augmented reality has created a new space, let's say, for self-expression, and it's on this aspect that this project is well. So, this is one of the, let's say, two souls of squatting supermarkets. Um, it's a site-specific installation, and the other half is an augmented reality application. So, the squatting supermarket project was first presented at the Piemont Disha Festival in 2009, and it essentially reproduced a supermarket in which the, let's say, interconnection of uh, networks defining the product's histories, its stories, etc. <coughs> all come together. So what happens is you take one of the products off the shelf and you pre um, present it in front of a webcam. And the webcam um, uses a, an image recognition system related to the logo and close in this case it pulled a video um, talking about the backstories of their trade coffee as an example. Um, the point of this <laughs> being that um, by grabbing a product off the shelf, you really become immersed in the experience. You try to connect to the story and the possibility of writing a part of the story related to the projects. So these products on the shelves become more animated, they become spaces for self-expression, which again becomes a, um, an interactive, let's say, channel of communication. And the access to all of this information is via the local, something very common to all of us. Um, let's see. So the way that it works is, um, from the technological standpoint, is that, again, it's an augmented reality application and it interacts with the logos so that when the picture is taken, the app launches an image recognition system and allows the user to access uh, additional information uh, coming from a plurality of sources, some of which I'll show you. So we have uh, various open emergent multi-authored galaxies, let's say, that are connected to this peer-to-peer -peer thematic social network. And it's layered on top of the product, again, connected via the logo. So the logos themselves become wikis, open communication infrastructures, as well as uh, connect to distributed social networks and peer-to-peer -peer ecosystems. So this is an example of some of the things you can find on the social media platform, where users, of course, are encouraged to post comments um, about brands, uh, different products. They can also guide um, other users to alternative mechanism, I'm sorry, alternative products. Um, and in general, it creates a space for dialogue and an instant information exchange where it can discuss things from sustainability to alternative economy, uh, and moreover, let's say, give a voice to uh, critical data and practices. So the hope of all of this, let's say, is that companies start, or should start, feeling the need to uh, confront this globally interconnected network so that the relation with consumers is, uh, or let's say the maintenance of a good reputation is no longer dependent on themselves for monitoring or for controlling for this, but instead is forced through a complex social and cultural dynamic and it's, of course, progressively more chaotic. And uh, let's say that one point of this specific case um, is, again, relating to ICT's role in sustainability in general. And so um, ICT in general provides uh, a wide range of tools for what's been called social owner spaces. 
and in environmental terms, homeostasis is you know, these set of processes that an organism uses to self-monitor their own environment. And through feedbacks and monitoring and regulation, they are constantly changing their behavior in order to react to that environment. And the point is that squatting supermarkets, and I see in this way, uh, is trying to play a role in enabling these new types of, of mechanisms to take place. And so the goal of the project has been to create a massively distributed process which is capable of superimposing uh, an additional informational and educational layer on top of the common shopping process or practices. And we hope to transform them into uh, potential occasions for a new ethical social consumerism to take place. Uh, finally, it's also been a name to freely distribute this technology, uh, excuse me, to freely distribute this technological framework so that researchers, designers, et cetera, whomever, people from all around the world can instantiate this type of technology for their own purposes. So the, let's say, potential uses of this type of platform are essentially infinite. Um, and we hope that, um, yeah, it will amplify the power of social and consumer dynamics in the marketplace. Yep. Okay.